Hello and welcome to Failure Analysis. My name is Kevin Jordan, and today we're here to talk about truck stop donkey hole. It's a phrase I use on my channel from time to time, and uh, it actually relates to game design and what I see as um, some of the failings of more recent game design in several games. This is a video of Pestily talking to Veritas. Um, and they're talking about Escape from Tarkov um, and what it ended up being for me is a great example of, of the concept I'm talking about where, which I'll define in a minute um, but it has to do with players um, re recommending game design changes and um, it can be a very dangerous thing if it doesn't go through the filter of a game designer so um, and a good game designer will make good choices after the feedback and because he'll be able to mold the feedback into something usable. Bad game designers will kind of just take the, the feedback as is and put it right into the game in an attempt to appease the person that, you know, that, that's been giving the feedback, the player base, so to speak. Um, but that can lead to a very down a very dangerous path. So uh, welcome along and uh, hope you enjoy the little chat about Truck Stop Donkey Hole. So what is Truck Stop Donkey Hole? So I first defined this in my, in my channel a while back um, and I compared it to something that you know very few of us have any knowledge of but um, sort of the art of seduction, romance um, and you know for, for those of you that have had this experience um, when you first meet a woman that you're interested in there's like a slow, steady progression towards intimacy. Um, and that buildup is really exciting. That buildup is really satisfying. Um, you know, the first time you make a, that person smile, the first time you, um, you know, you end up uh, a light touch on the arm you get from her. Um, you make her laugh for the first time. You know, these things are sort of amazing stepping stones towards ultimately, you know, wh where you want to be. But they're all an, an incredible and an important part of uh, the process. Um, and eventually you get to those in intimate moments and that's the culmination of all of those previous moments. And it makes the entire experience really more gratifying and more engaging and more, uh, more compelling than it otherwise would have been. So the alternative to that is you go down to the local truck stop and there's a little hole cut in, you know, the, the bathroom where you put your junk and something happens on the other side and you take care of business and you leave, right? And you don't know what's on the other side. It could be a dude. It could be a, it could be a woman. It could be a donkey, right? So... Uh, that's what we call it truck stops truck stop donkey hole right so and unfortunately this without realizing it this is what players are frequently asking for when it comes to game design they're trying to take the first story the first process which is slow and engaging and meaningful and building up to something really super amazing and reduce it down to its component parts which is putting my dick in a hole and that's it. That's that's the experience. I'm done, and I can get back to whatever it is I was doing. Um, but they've taken all of the joy out of it. They've taken all of the process out of it. Um, and that stuff is really important. So, in a well-rounded, engaging, game-designed experience, you have all of those other things. Um, and and players sometimes want to just bypass all that and go straight to the the end product right uh, but they're depriving themselves and as creators you're allowing yourself to deprive players of truly amazing experiences by eliminating all of that extra stuff so um, and this relates to game design in a lot of different places but this video I'm about to show uh, talks about something related to this in no uncertain terms in my in my opinion and so it was a great example of kind of what I'm talking about before I start the video, I want to say um, Pestily is an absolute god. He's a legend. Uh, for any of you guys excited or looking forward to drama that I'm trying to create between him 
and me or Veritas. That's not what this is about. I've actually submitted the adoption papers to Pestily. All he has to do is sign them and I can start legitimately calling him dad. Um, I'm, I love Pestily. He's awesome. I don't know Veritas very well, but I know he's an, an, an amazing first person shooter gamer. Um, and you know, his play speaks for itself. And one of the things that makes, um, high-end professional extremely successful uh, gamers what they are is that sort of narrow-mindedness and that single-minded determination to be and to have one type of experience right and they very frequently make poor game designers because when it comes to thinking about the product or the game or the whatever it is you're building um they forget that there's a ton of other people that aren't having the experience they have and aren't having don't have the the goals and the ambitions that they have and so all the things that make them great at what they do actually translate to making them poor at game design now obviously this is a generalization but i found it to be pretty true uh very frequently in my experiences and so it takes a very rare person to be able to take that competitive player hat off and put on a game designer hat and make it work. So this is not about drama or how I feel about these two gentlemen. They're just sharing their opinions. But a good game designer will be, again, will be able to translate what they're talking about into usable things to make the game better and not just cut and paste what they're saying and put it into the game. So... Here we go. Let's let's uh, let's take a listen. And I and I think that they're right, but for the wrong reasons. Like what they love about the game is not that it's realistic. Um, it's that it's, it's that immersive. It's immersive. And and I've been actually preaching this for like over a year now, where I've said Taco's not realistic at all. It's immersive. There are realist realistic aspects of the game, like the environmental detail or like the uh the way the gun looks and acts and, and the you know the cocking of it there are lots and lots mm -hmm. of realistic aspects of the game but the the reason why people um get so enthralled with this game is um is the best way i can word it is somebody in my chat said earlier today it was only like an hour ago how he actually has to hype him up himself up to get into a raid because it's he, it's like a mm -hmm. it's like a horror movie to him he'll go into a raid and he's like there'll be he's afraid that someone's just going to blast him in the head from next to him and he missed it and he's just going to sh sh shit himself you know and there's like yep. and I, I honestly i miss a lot of those feelings because i'm a bit desensitized to a lot of that now but tarkov has this way of just making you lose yourself inside the game and it's where sometimes you can play tarkov and you can play the game for like hours straight and it feels like minutes i'm so glad the pestily pointed this out because this will be really relevant later like so I think they're going to start this video and they're they're going to touch on the magic, right, of Tarkov, right? And what's and this is this is relevant because they're going to describe the magic and why it's so amazing. <laughs> and then later on in the video, not very far soon after, I feel like they're going to forget what they were just saying <laughs> and start talking about things that are going to chip away at the magic right and i talk about this a lot in relation to retail wow or wow in general um how relevant it is because there's a there's a magic to the combination of these elements that is lost on a lot of players they can't put their finger exactly on it sometimes they can but then they so easily forget in order to chase the specific changes that they want and not realize that the changes they want actually damage the very combination, the very recipe that makes the game so amazing. So I'm really glad they started with this. And also I'm really happy that Tarka or uh, Pestily mentioned uh, the kind of person that is much more average person because Tarkov is a very scary game. <laughs> Uh, many describe it as a horror game and you see these streamers playing at a high level nothing phases them they just blow through everything and some people do play at that level but i think a lot of people 
are on that on the edge quite frequently and so it's it's really important to remember not just as a game designer not just the people playing at the level these guys are playing at but you know the average level sort of thing and so changes to accommodate these guys that are desensitized like he described or playing at a very specific level um, can very easily toss out you know, average Joe when it comes to enjoying, you know, the game itself. So let's continue listening though. Or you are like... healing yourself, <clears throat> and as soon as you heal, you, you hear the guy starting to run and you're like, drop, drop it, drop it. And, and that's why like when I made, a, a lot of the video focuses on the idea of abstraction and being like this middle layer between the player and like, the soldier in the raid series right like you want to feel like that guy who's not scared who's badass who is fucking trained he knows what he's doing um and when the game refuses to let you do what you want instantly that immersion is broken the f so this is an example of what i'm talking about he wants uh to be able to ditch healing you know stop heal immediately right um, but the decision to heal or not is a compelling one, and it's an important one because there's a chance that you do it at the wrong time, right? So very little to do with realism, and he's frustrated because he's been killed while bandaging or whatever because <laughs> he can't drop it fast enough, as we all have been. But those are good moments because those make him think about when is the right time to heal. So. Um, that's a cool gameplay element because um, if there were no cost to starting a heal people would be constantly starting heals um, willy-nilly in the middle of fights and and it also you know damages the value of stims which are quick you know to use during combat um, so there's more going on in the gameplay there than he understands he's just frustrated by the fact that he has to make this tough decision, which um, is an important one for the experience. Facade of like this seamless connection between you and the game just breaks down completely. And now you're fighting against the game where it's like, I, I want to do something and, I, and the game won't let me and I'm gonna die because of it. Like reloading when you wanna, you're standing up while you're reloading or canceling a heal or putting the mag back in after you check it like so many things just you know and then you get frustrated and then obviously you know twitch chat is twitch chat and they'll say oh we'll do what do you expect like you you know you need to play around these shitty annoying things it's your fault and it's like to some extent yeah that's true right like if i went to heal i guess i should know that there's a chance it'll bug out, it, but it takes oh, you mean, five yeah, yeah, yeah. seconds or that it'll bug out or whatever. But if it happens, it's still, I still don't feel great about it. Right. It's, it's. But you're not, you're not supposed to feel great about it. Right. Like that's your, the, the, the joy comes from knowing like all the prep in that, in that choice. Right. Like the agonizing build up to do I start a heal or not that's where that's where the magic is happening right and then when you make a bad decision it costs you and you make a good decision you you benefit right so and this happens a million times a second in Tarkov so again that's where the magic is and that magic would be lost if again you could just back out of bad decisions really easily we, I just want it to be better and it can be better, you know? So that's what like the frustrating thing is, is like, yeah, this is the shitty thing that I know we signed up for, um, but that doesn't make it any better when it happens, you know? And um, if you are like new to either Veritas or his content, um, he, this is the third video of the, or fourth? Fourth. Fifth. Fifth. All right, maybe I missed one. I've definitely seen three others before this one. Um, and they talk about like, all the different stages of Tarkov and and what makes it so good and because I remember how um Nikita it was you and me on a podcast with Nikita I think for the very first time and he said Skyrim Tarkov is not meant to be fun uh it was the very first time that we ever spoke to Nikita and um it took me a year to fucking really 
grok what because everyone used it as a meme like taco's not meant to be fun you're meant to fucking hate hate life <laughs> like and oh like and that video was the best explanation even though it was quite a, an extensive explanation it was the easiest way of explaining it is like you don't go to a horror movie to have fun you go to be scared you know it's, it's exactly right and this is what i love about nikita um because he knows you know that he's he's setting out to make these decisions agonizing to make these experiences agonizing and to punish you when you make bad decisions and to reward you when you make a series of good decisions and play well so um and the game is agonizing and that's it's amazing and it's it's amazing because of that agony it's it's amazing because of the texture the difference between a good raid and a bad raid you can have several bad raids in a row just hate the game and then have one amazing raid and it makes up for all of the garbage you just went through right? um, and that's the texture right that's the range of emotional experiences that this game allows for and you don't want to chip away out of that at, at that by pushing all the emotional experiences towards the middle right to deliver a consistently mediocre experience right that's terrible so uh, this is what you have to be mindful of as a game designer when players are talking about the stuff they hate sometimes the stuff that they hate is designed that they hate it and is actually creating that emotional range that they can go through a wealth of experiences i want to move on to the topic of void because actually when you started talking about the whole void thing and um it, it, it i've been wanting void for so long and i think it it's it's come more enhanced the more i've played rust about some of the random experiences i have because of void and i i, I somewhat deliberately had an experience today just because of that video um where there was a, a naked dude he had like a, I don't know, a hatchet or a pistol or some shit and i deliberately tried to make friends with him which i did and then i i killed everyone in the factory and took him around and got him all the loot and stuff and extracted right and i was just using the the hand signals and the the voice lines and all that so this this recording's pretty much unusable without some serious editing so i'm going to keep recording but yeah this is pretty bad we'll keep watching though because he does eventually get to the part where i want to talk about <clears throat> but yeah voip is yeah no um I don't think Pestley has any idea <laughs> what he's asked for. And he's played Rust, sure, but he played Rust on a streamer server, right? Where everyone's kind of like not at that level. You know, like everyone is streaming, right? I assume that's where he had this experience. Maybe he didn't, but um, you guys watched. Some of you watched my first day in... <laughs> in rust and it was amazing <laughs> it was amazing because of the vo voip but it was also horrifying right so uh pretty funny let's keep watching though kobe <laughs> That's right. imagine that scenario i was talking about before where like your buddy's like all right i'm going in and he runs in a factory and you hear like gunshots and an explosion and you're like dan Dan, you know, and there's like no answer. You're like, fuck, <laughs> he, he's dead, right? Like, that is, oh god, that's so. <laughs> so the other thing I'll, I'll I'll mix into this is that <clears throat> people aspire to be Pestily. They aspire to be Veritas, right? And in competency at the game, um, and so there's a, these guys have large communities of people that want to be like them, and sometimes that comes with um thinking like they do right and mirroring or reflecting or bullhorning what they're saying every chance they get right and so that's why you know we, that's why they're called influencers right um so that's why this kind of stuff is especially dangerous for a game designer who's not thinking it all the way through because not only is it coming from people that are prominent in the community and play at a high level but it's also being reverberated by potentially thousands and thousands of people um and so before you know it you know the team is being bombarded by this idea that we have to do this because thousands of people are saying it 
but um, again, a good game designer will be able to parse that and be able to say, okay, this is one person saying that, and this is why they're saying that, and this is where they're coming from, but I'm designing for a specific experience in mind. I'm designing for a broader player base than this person represents, et cetera, et cetera. So, and because sometimes they're right, like obviously fixing the bug where you, you heal forever, you don't heal properly when you hit the button. Um, that's just a bug, it needs to be fixed, right? But um, changing the heal thing so that you can bounce out instantly is a game design decision, not a bug. And so the game designer has to realize that and respect that. Um, the other thing now, I know this is going to be like controversial. Bum, bum, bum. I thought it was really cool where you talked about how if you could have a marker on your teammate when they're within a certain view and distance and range and, and there's no obstructions. That's where everybody is going to get butt hurt. I know, but mm -hmm. hear me out before people freak out. I would want it only there until we can actually properly customize our looks. Right? Because right now you have, you have no possible way of seeing the different, you could have two players right next to each other and, and it doesn't matter if they're like, like you, as long as they're the same faction, like you said, it's really hard to tell. Um, and even, it, it, it all... but like, I'm just talking literally if they're within say 15 to 20 meters and in clear line of sight, there could be like a simple little gray dot that's half transparent on them. And like, I know like the, like the proximity loot dot yep. is that's nobody it. ever complains about that breaks their immersion. You never fucking notice it. It just gives you an end. But you can't take that change back. <clears throat> that's the thing. Once it's there, you can't take it back. It's too difficult to take back. So if they do plan on allowing people to customize their appearance more, so squad recognition is more um, achievable, then that's what they should be working on. They shouldn't be adding a marker. It's a short-term solution for a bigger problem and Tarkov benefits um, from friendly fire, in my opinion. <laughs> That's the other big gameplay decision. So I don't even know if they're planning on allowing squad recognition to be more available and more, you know, to be cleaner. But, um, but I think, you know, in total, Tarkov actually benefits from the fact that you, you know, this problem they're having. Of course, you don't want to shoot your friends. Of course, you want to be really clean with all your shots and only hit the enemy. But, uh, <laughs> but that's one of those things that it's like when you make bad decisions and it results in bad events, that's what makes Tarkov a better overall textured experience. So don't remove that because you're irritated. You shot your buddy or your buddy shot you. You instantly have all the information. You know who is going to do what. And that, you don't have that context. So the dot is... is a and, and this is the thing I'll reiterate. Um, because they're perfectionists with their level of play, right? Every tiny little failure um, is unacceptable, right? Because they are striving for such a high percentage of excellence. Like a lot of this stuff to us is just like, I just want to get out of the raid alive. You know, <laughs> like we're, we're battling at such a different level that, you know, zeroing in on really, really fine, you know, stuff like that um, is, is way beyond us, right? But they want to eliminate this one little problem because it's like, yeah, they, they, they still survive 80% of the time. Their survival rate is still 80%, but every once in a while they shoot their friend or their friend shoots them. And so they're trying to get rid of that last little problem, get that up to 100%, trying to get rid of this little problem, get it up to 100%, right? And so, um, and that's what makes them amazing at what they do, which is operate at a high level. But um, again, Tar Escape from Tarkov will suffer on the path of getting Veritas to 100% survival rate, right? Um, and that's what, that's that's the difference that game designers when watching things like this have to take, in, take into account. 
the simple abstraction for all, all of the information that you would and... have in real life. So I don't even care if it's a dot. I don't fucking care what it is. If your armband blinks, I don't, I don't care. Just make it so that I have information in the game that a reasonable human being would normally have in real life. Give me some proxy for that and I'd be happy with it. It's not, it's not hardcore when you look at three people standing next to them that you're supposed to be fucking homies with and you don't know who's who, that's not realistic. You're just a, a brain dead Jeez, idiot. Under if you can't tell your your buddy from another dude standing next to each other. Um, another important part is this is why, this is another skill you have to develop in Tarkov um, that you have naturally in real life, right? Uh, which I love. It's another way in which you can get better is with callouts, as Micro you know, talks about. Um, naming every building naming every angle right like yeah some people think that's annoying but it makes you better it makes you better when you properly communicate and this is an area and when you move together as a team and you get to know each other as a team and the way you move and um that's why some people like duoing with certain people and not other people right because they you get to know each other you move the same way you have the similar play patterns and similar mentalities uh, that are supportive of each other's gameplay. Um, it, you just work better together, and it's one of those skills you have to develop to be effective in small groups or large groups, especially in large groups. Um, and that's great. That's a great element of the game. And so taking that out is one less thing that people have to do to be good at the game, which I don't, you know, because that's what game, for a lot of people, that's what gaming's all about, is that journey of getting better at a thing, right? So taking a bunch of stuff out so you don't have to be good at that. I tell you what, um, you make it so you can recognize your friends, Veritas, and I'll get auto-aim so that I don't have to get better at shooting targets, because you're really good at that, and I'm not good at that. I'll work, you know, I, I'm okay at call-outs, you know, so I'll just work on that part of my game and make it so every time I click, I click heads like you do, and we'll be good. So, obviously, you know, me suggesting that is ridiculous, but I I throw the opposite, and I suggest that that's also on the ridiculous side. I, like, e even when I'm, like, holding an angle, and then I see someone like, all right, this guy's about to push, okay, cool, and then, like, I love he that. goes behind a wall... You hear gunfire, and then you hear running, and you hear running to your right and running to your left, and it's like, which way did you go? Their left is not your right. Like, if you're just hearing them in Discord, you have no context, unless they can tell you if they have exact call out for Compass, their exact baby. location, <laughs> which isn't always possible. Especially Compass if saves words, lives. Or if you're in just a uh, like. Uh, where's that the new center building with like the mounted machine guns and customs just remember expansion? red is north I it, um, Skeletor, but I don't know what it's all called. those like people don't have call outs for all of the slush that does big open because he space. plays with the same people that many times but, but does he have a call like that whole first main floor area like you could break that up into multiple there's like there's two rooms and then there's a bunch of open space yeah he doesn't have call outs for the open space over there and the open space over there you'd be surprised so, man so the thing is like i mean I, this, I would love to know what the fuck they are but the, the thing is i'm skeptical i know we're all we're all uh <laughs> uh want things to be perfect in our video game <clears throat> but yeah i do think again like i think Tarkov being punishing and Tarkov leading to disaster is actually one of its, you know, uh, a big part of its charm. Um, and I don't want to see the removal of these frustrations again um, so that we can eliminate the feel-bads from the experience is not the right direction for this game. This game is unique and genre-creating genre and kind of trend-setting because of its these elements. Um, not despite them. So having someone watch back the perimeter is necessary. You're talking about security? He's talking about establishing security on a location before you start looting? I give that a big old head scratch. What in the hell are you talking about? Well, <laughs> missed.
<laughs> I see a thing, I loot it. <laughs> runs, runs in. I just see muzzle flashes, and then a dude runs out. And then the door, and then the door opened, and a guy peeked his head, <clears throat> and I'm like, oh shit! I once tapped the dude in the head, and then all of a sudden, somebody runs out and starts running towards me and it's like ah he's just he's in all black like i don't what do i do right like i have no no way of knowing if that that's is Tarkov, clean, baby. Or if that's the guy that just happened to have similar gear as him there's no way for him to be like i'm coming out because what ended up happening was he ended up in another room and then two seconds later there was somebody else in another room so when someone comes out and they say yeah that's me or yeah i'm at this room there's like never enough context um because what ended up happening is he someone came out and i'm like is that you and he said yeah because he thought i was <laughs> like he started to heal or he mumbled or something but i was asking about a visual cue yeah like is that you is not enough to answer and he's like yeah so then the guy starts shooting at me i'm like fuck so then i go back heal a little bit peek out kill the guy in the hallway and it was clean because the other guy went back in and then clean came out and it's like <laughs> but if if what a great story what a great story if everything had gone perfectly it would have been yeah we killed a bunch of dudes and took a bunch of loot and we got out that's a shit story <laughs> Because they used bad comps, they had a great story. There was something identifying him in a way that, like, you would have in contextual in real life that wouldn't happen. And you can't just fall back on, oh, well, your comms need to be better. Sure, they do, right? But that that isn't an excuse for the shortcoming of, the, of a game design element. Because the, um... the game can also be better. See, this is pure truck stop donkey hole right here. That right there is exactly what I'm talking about. The game design created an awesome story because of your comms were shit, right? And that's what it's trying to do. <clears throat> but he wants, what he wants is to succeed every time. He wants the story, the personal fable of we rolled through, we slaughtered everyone, we took all their shit and we got out without a problem, right? And he wants to do that 100% of the time, right? He doesn't expect to do that 100% of the time, but he wants to do that 100% of the time. And he thinks every time that doesn't happen, maybe there's something in the in the game design, right? That's not allowing me to do this, right? And so in this particular instance, it's, I can't recognize my friends. That's a game design problem. But he's forgetting that the game design, the intent there was to create a moment where if he has shit comms, he's going to shoot his friend <laughs> and he's going to fail in his mission and he's going to have an amazing experience and story, right? And the amazing experience is a painful one, but it's still amazing because, again, he's sharing this experience. And Pestley's like, he thought it was hilarious, right? I think it's hilarious. <laughs> it's a good story, right? That's what Tarkov's trying to accomplish. And it's, it's succeeding, right? So leave it alone. Let it keep doing its thing. He just said you would have shot me yesterday in the window if it weren't for my purple armband. That's actually not what happened. I tried to shoot you and I missed you <laughs> because I was fully convinced based on the context that there was another guy with a purple armband. Because I went around... Um, the, the, one of the marked rooms on the, like the barracks in the corner of reserve I don't remember which one it was but he went to the front door and I was like I'm going to go around the back I jump in the window and kill a guy in the marked and then all of a sudden there's somebody at the back window with a purple armband and I'm like holy shit and I turn and start shooting and then I like jump out of the way because I'm like fuck like I almost died and then he's like I saved your life and I'm like did you just kill the dude with the purple armband? Like, I thought that was you. And he's like, it was me. And I'm like, what the fuck? Because he went around front, I went around back, and then he didn't go in. He came all the way around behind, and there was a guy out front shooting me, and he saved my life. It's like... But the whole context of the situation was fucking confusing as hell. Another great story. 
and another situation of terrible comms. <laughs> Tarkov strikes again. <laughs> We've done it, everyone. And the armband, it's something that it helps, some but it... percentage of the time is going to get you killed. If, if it just so happens the other team is wearing a fucking red armband and you're also wearing red armband. <laughs> I think Battlestate Games will make an accommodation to these types of complaints. Yeah, Nikita's been impressively stalwart in the design, right? So you can never rule it out, uh, especially over time. That pressure builds up. But um, I talk about game designers having the right amount of ego, you know. Um, not too much where they they never listen, um, but enough where they can hold off against the the swarm and the tide of people requesting changes that dumb the game down um, and say, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stick with my original vision because I believe in it and blah, 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 right? Which will come across as ego, right? Because the first thing people say when you don't do what they want is they start accusing you of things, right? Being an egomaniac or living in an ivory tower, or, you know, whatever it is, right? <clears throat> Um, they try to chip at you in a different way, right? But Nikita's been pretty good, uh, and I've been really impressed with with uh, the way he responds to things so far. Um, and again, it's been in th little things that he's said all along. So, um, like, um, it, you're not supposed to have fun playing Tarkov. Or games uh, Tarkov's not supposed to be fun, um, or you know things like. I want to when I when I tweak things I want there to be enough complaining right like if I if there's no complaining anymore I've gone too far uh, I need to dial it back so uh, those little things make me realize that he's got a very specific vision in mind and he's been really good so far at, at chasing it so wouldn't read the subreddit seems like it really affects him yeah at the end of the day we're all human beings and we want to be liked and you know I, t I talk about that a lot so um and uh it's 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 very difficult to resist that urge right to just make everyone happy with you so but a uh, good game designer can fans right like <clears throat> so the the point i want to make is i think it's an interesting concept i don't i'm not really sold either way um i'm probably leaning more against it but i'll like I actually just want more ways to customize the character in an obvious way, not just like, give me, I don't know. An idea was thrown around about making, you could have like schmugs and stuff that would not come off. I don't know. Like uh, clothing and that, it's just, I, I don't know the answer. I don't know the answer, but I like the idea that there's a way that I can identify, like maybe you can make it so someone's got like a pimp walk. <laughs> a pimp walk. <laughs> <laughs> then everyone's got a pimp walk. Um, but yeah, the clothing thing is definitely interesting because then it's like, okay, now run a night mission in the rain when it's foggy, right? And it's just like these problems creep right back up when everything's monochromatic, you know what I mean? So um, that's just part of it, right? Stop s trying to solve a problem that is actually making the whole experience more engaging, more immersive, you know? making those decision moments some more agonizing, right? It's not necessary. You're, you're chasing a thing to perfect your experience, but um, you don't actually want perfection. You don't. Utopia is really boring. What, were they fucking, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, just why is it that I can actually there's no, there's no reason why, I mean, like, there's no reason why you should lose your cosmetic items when you die. Um, the only thing that I can think I of would be fine if I, if I had to pay a 10,000 ruble tax every single fucking raid just to wear it, as long as I don't have to fucking buy, buy it. it. But hey, dude, if you want something easier, you want something more convenient, you're playing the wrong game. You're not allowed to want anything to, to improve a feature in any way, improve the usability, improve the user experience you're not allowed to improve any uh, quality of life things otherwise that's against the hardcore punishing nature of tarkov 
<laughs> yeah, he he's being sarcastic here, <laughs> but he's he's damn right. <laughs> God damn right. That's right. Quality of life for who? You know, like we can argue forever, right? Um, but yeah, this is what he's chasing, and I get it. I, I you know I've dealt with players like this my whole career, right? But uh, game designers got to resist this urge, right? Because you will end up at, down at the truck stop. I've Which always such a argued fucking argument. the game... Um, the dead. most enjoyable aspect of the game for me Ouch. is being in the raid. People want to roll their eyes, but... When you're trying to build a gun and you want to get back into a raid and all you've been doing is dying and then you get like three error pop-ups and you go to do a thing and the gun is too big to, to build and the presets. Yeah, nobody's rolling their eyes at this part. Those are just bugs. And yeah, we all are annoyed by them and we wish they'd go away. So this isn't the part that people take objection to. People aren't like, yeah, leave the bugs in. It's super realistic and it's important that it takes a lot of extra time to fight the UI. You know, like nobody's really arguing that. Um, but they are arguing that, you know, the time between raid is, um, an important element of the overall experience. System has all, like, you just get annoyed with all these little things and then you finally get into a raid after waiting 10 minutes in a queue and you then you insta die to some yeah. bullshit and you're like, and then, so you're already fucking, that's enough to, to be annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> this is another one of my favorite parts, like. I have no sympathy for Veritas with his 80% survival rate, right? Like, oh, every once in a while, he gets killed by some random bullshit in the first two minutes of a raid. <laughs> I get that like five times in a row, right? <laughs> um, after I've built all my kit and gone through all the annoyances that he goes through, although I don't even have the resources and the gear to make the stuff that he makes, right? I have to put up with garbage guns and garbage armor, right? Um, but yeah, no sympathy, right? Because most of the time he's surrounded by dudes that he's killed and he, he's struggling to figure out how to put it all in his pack so he can carry all the loot out, you know? Like, that's the more normal experience for him. You know, it's like that's once in a million games for me. We're not going to count the other night before you guys say it. That was a rarity. Void, right? But That's enough to, to make me build the quick same, game. To, to build this, I want to just build the same kit. Like, I wanted to use that and I never got a chance to. Oh, sorry, you've bought too many of those things. Wait three hours and you can buy another rail or another hand grip. Or it's like. Again, the economy matters. It matters to the experience, right? And those things are trying to create an economy based experience. And he wants a loadout system, basically. You know, he wants. Um, you know, Call of Duty, in and out, in and out, in and out. Um, the old in out that you get down at the truck stop donkey hole. But uh, yeah, don't go that direction. Anyway, there's your truck stop donkey hole chat. Sorry the video is so scuffed because I, I didn't realize there was so much in between. <clears throat> but there you have it. Let's play some Tarkov. You guys want to play Tarkov now? Let's go get shot. 